My name is Benjamin Norris. I play Trent Harrison on the Netflix show Never Have I Ever, and you're watching Young Entertainment Mag. Thank you for joining me. I'm Daniela with Young Entertainment Mag. We're so excited to talk with you today. Is that okay? Oh my God, it was perfect. Is that, okay. is that similar <laughs> to like your slate when you go on auditions at all? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. Can you give us like what your slate looks like when you go on auditions? Because I feel like that'd be so fun. <laughs> Funny. I mean, they're all, it's, some are different variations, but they're usually you give your name, your height, and where you're based. So I'll be like, my name is Benjamin Norris. I'm 5'8". And I'm based in Los Angeles. Nice. And then do you do like this side to side profile thing or is that like old school? No. So usually that's actually for commercial auditions. And then they'll also want you to show your hands if you're going to be, you know, if it's, it's a, if it's a product that you use with your hands. So you show profiles and you show hands as well, but not for like TV and movie auditions. They're more like, we need to know that you're the character. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. cool. Do you slate in character or do you slate like as you and then like make the switch? It's a great question. Uh, I always slate as myself, but I've told this story before. I, ironically, the never have I ever audition, I feel like I kind of slated in character um, okay. because I just felt like I wanted, I just knew that, I knew that character, I knew that role and I wanted it so badly. So I just, why not? nothing to lose you know so i kind of i kind of slated in character for that one that's cool i mean yeah I'm a excerpt but i feel like it would be challenging to slate as yourself and then switch really quick but i guess that's what acting is like that's your craft that's what it, you gotta turn it on you know yeah wow that is so cool thanks for sharing yeah of so course fun. so what was it like coming back for season three? Oh man it was it was uh it was really, really great. I mean, we took a bit of a break and um, also, you know, season two was shot kind of in like the peak of COVID, mm -hmm. um, which was really difficult. And, and it was it was hard. Sometimes it was hard to connect because of that. But season three, things were a little more chill. Um, so that was really nice. But um, I love the show. I love everyone who works on the show. So it was like coming back to a family reunion. It was it was so nice. That is so cool. Okay, so this is full disclosure. This is not on my list of questions, but you just brought up filming in COVID. And when yeah. I was talking with um, BB Wood, who is on Love Victor, she mentioned that like, specifically for COVID, all the kissing scenes, they had this protocol where they literally had Listerine on standby and they had to swish in between every single take for like germ reasons. Did you guys have to do that on set too for COVID? So I believe anyone who kissed on season two had to, which yeah. my character did not. Mm -hmm. I think things things for us were a little bit op opened up down the road, but I do yeah. think for season two, they were pretty on that. Yeah, it's, it was so random. She was like, now every time like I smell Listerine, like it takes me back. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's so funny. Yeah. Your character has so much screen time this season. What is that like for you? That's so exciting. It was a dream come true. It truly was. I mean, you know, I got, I, I was very fortunate that the writers seemed to, you know, want to put me in more. And so every script I would get, if, if, if I hadn't gotten it yet, one of the leads were texting me and being like, wait till you get the next script. You're going to be really excited about it. And uh, I just feel, I feel very, very grateful for uh, the powers that be um to you know to include me so yeah. yeah i mean it was it was uh it was surreal that's so awesome so yeah. i'm curious if you've gotten the qu this question a lot you probably have but we have to know so is the hair part of your character description did you have long hair when you auditioned or did you ben come in with it and they're like we want trent to have long hair too yeah, it was definitely not in the character description. If anything, the character description was a, a little bit different from what I brought to it. Um, so the character description was very like frat boy jock. Okay. And, you know, I went in there with a little bit more of a stoner energy. I think it's yeah. natural because I have long hair. Uh, and then also, I never audition wearing hats, but I, I, I read the sides and I was like, 
I, I think Trent wears a hat. So I actually went in there with a backwards hat with my ha hair down. And uh, I do think I brought something a little different to the role. And I think they were like, maybe this could be Trent. You know, that that's how I, I, I took it. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay, so I dabbled yeah. a little bit in acting in my LA days. And I remember one of the things that they <clears> always <throat> say was that you, it doesn't really matter like what choice you make as long as it's strong. If that is that correct? Because they want to know that A, you can make a character choice and B, they can like redirect you. And it sounds like you read these sides and you're like, okay, I'm making this choice to wear a hat, even though I never do. Was that scary at all thinking? Like, do you ever second guess your choices? Like, should I not wear a hat or? Um, the only reason why I second guess, second guess my choices for this audition is that the walls are paper thin at that uh, casting office so I can hear everyone and I could hear the way they prepared it. And so, and it was different for me. And so there was a second of like, uh oh, but you know, that's not the point of auditioning is to go in there, put your best version of the character. And if that's what they want or what they're looking for, then they'll take it. And if not, you should still be proud of what you prepared. And yeah. um, I, I heard that in, in an interview with Brian Cranston one, one time, and I've kind of like taken that yeah. with me throughout my journey. Um, so yeah, no, I think, I think confidence is key. And if, and if you're what they're looking for, you are, and if not, you know, you don't take it personally and, yeah. and it's all about being proud of yourself. Yeah. Totally. That's such a cool perspective. We have a lot of aspiring young actors that watch our clips on TikTok. And oh, that's on great. So it's cool to hear your perspective on it because it's so true. It's like you go in there, you need to be proud of what you're doing, but I'm sure just as a human and you're saying like the, the walls are paper thin, it's probably easy to second guess yourself, but hey, yeah. you're the one that got the role. So that's really, really cool. There you go. I had a good, I had a good feeling about it. As soon as I read the sides, I was like, I, I, I know what to do with this guy. I just, I just know what to do with this guy. So it really, it really, it really did have a different feeling than a lot of my other auditions. That is so cool. I always yeah. like to know that from actors, like when, you know, now, you know, you got the role, you've been doing it for a minute. It's like, did it feel different? And some actors say not at all. And some say like, I knew this was mine. It's yeah, crazy. It, it felt, it felt that way. It definitely felt that way for me. Also, you know, it's funny going back to the hair thing. When I got pinned, for anyone who doesn't know, you know, pinned just means that uh, they want to check your availability for the shoot dates, and then you, along with a, a couple of other choices, get pinned. So it doesn't mean you get the role, but you're kind of like, okay, I'm hanging on by a thread here. And uh, when they pinned me, they were like, by the way, don't let him cut his hair. And I was like, oh. I am not gonna, I am <laughs> not touching the hair. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god. So have you had long hair for a long time? Uh, yeah, at this point, this round of long hair has probably been since about 2016. Um, okay. Throughout my life, I've always gone through phases of long hair. Yeah. Uh, dating, dating back to uh, Hanson. There was a band oh. Hanson. Oh, yeah. In the I know <laughs> and so uh, there was a Zach Hanson. I was like, I want to be that guy. So that was the yeah. first time I like grew out my hair and then I would cut it and you know, so back and forth, yeah. I love a good Hanson reference, taking me back. <laughs> I needed that, oh my gosh. <laughs> so how do you think Trent has grown from season one to season three? Uh, he's grown a lot. And uh, once again, I'm appreciative to the writers and Mindy and Lang, our creators who, who took him there. But, you know, Trent really was just kind of like a comedic relief, one line kind of, Mm -hmm. ridiculous character and he and he still is that but they started to give him depth and they started to give him you know this three-dimensional feel and um you know he really went from just like a really dumb one-liner to like a guy who will say certain things and you're like did Trent just say that and that's what I love about this character is like yeah. he's an onion you know you were pulling back the layers and um He's strange, but that's I, that's what I love about him. Yeah, it's got to be the most fun role to play ever. So it is fun. the most fun role to play. I mean, it is like my it's my favorite role. I can I can say I can say that He's, it's definitely my favorite role. That is so <laughs> cool. What like an epic accomplishment as an actor too to be able to play a role that you're just obsessed with because you don't always yeah. like that. So 
Totally. So at the end of season two, Trent asks out Eleanor at the school dance. We could only assume that comes into play in season three. So what was it like working with Ramona? And did you and Ramona do anything outside the scenes to help you kind of create that chemistry between the two of you? Yeah, I mean, working with Ramona is incredible. She is, she's very seasoned. She's worked a lot. Um, she is incredibly prepared. So Ramona takes her job very, very seriously. Not, she's not like serious on set. We keep things fun, but she is, she is so into her work. And I've, I learned a lot from her. Um, and so we would, we would run the scenes over and over and over. She likes, she likes to run the scenes over and over, which I highly suggest to anyone out there who's working um, because, you know, you're only just going to get more and more comfortable in the scene. And since we did have a lot of scenes, just the two of us, um, I, I think it's always important to really get to know someone as much as they're willing to share. And um, I think we were just vibing right off the bat. And it was, um, it was really easy to work with her. And I, I think she feels the same way as well. I mean, we would like talk about our lives and and you know talk about personal things but also joke around and ask each other's favorite whatever's you know and so um yeah i think it was just so important that we got really comfortable with each other so that the the scenes came off authentic and genuine totally and we can definitely feel that so what is one thing that you picked up from working with her um, or even just working together that you think you'll take with you onto your next role Number one, like I said, kind of running it over and over. Some some people, and, and there's there's no wrong answer here. Some people think that scenes could get stale if you run them over and over. Um, I have gone through phases where I felt that way, but after this, I definitely don't feel that anymore. Um, another thing is like she really she really dissects the script, and and if anyone out there has ever studied um, acting um, Shakespeare, like that's 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 kind of where it all comes from is you're dissecting every single line and understanding everything that they're saying and, and um, also, you know, whatever the subtext is. Mm -hmm. And um, she's really, really great at that. Like I see it, I'll run the scenes with her and I'll hold her script and I'll see how much she underlines and she writes and she breaks it down. Um, so that's what I mean by her just being so prepared. And it definitely inspired me. I learned a lot from that. And um, I'm going to take that with me on every job that I have. Yeah, that's really cool. I've heard the same thing. It's like people don't want to over rehearse it, but I think there's got to be something said to for comfortability where you're just exactly with the line so you can kind of release and be in the moment. So one on, exactly. That's exactly right. That's so cool. So what is yeah. your friendship with Paxton like this season? Oh, man. Do you mean with Darren or Paxton? <laughs> we know both. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's so fun because, you know, Darren is one of my best friends on set, of course. I mean, r day one, as soon as we met each other, I was like, yes, this guy <laughs> is my guy. And he's literally one of my best friends in real life, you know? And so, uh, um, but it's funny because, you know, I start doing a lot. Trent has a lot of Eleanor scenes and, you know, not as many with Paxton, but, um, you know, as people will see in the show, there's definitely kind of a storyline where Trent and Paxton are understanding that, like, they're not going to be at Sherman Oaks together forever. And I think maybe it's a little easier for Paxton. Maybe it's a little harder for Trent. I don't think he's too intelligent in that sense. So it takes a second for him to adjust and understand that. But um, you know what? This We've always said this... this um, this show is kind of like high school in general. You know, we have four seasons, there's four years of high school. So like, I think as actors, we're growing the same way our characters are, you know? It's like, oh, Ben is also not always gonna be in scenes with Darren. Trent's not always gonna be in class with Paxson, you know? And so I think it was kind of a natural progression. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have a favorite scene that you've ever shot with Darren? Oh man. Um... I would say just fun because of what we were doing. Um, there is there is a scene in season two when we're blowing things up. And I mean, that's a great time. 
Um, but towards the end of season three, there's kind of uh, not a goodbye, but kind of a see you later and, and kind of a, a discussion that I think a lot of young guys or, or young girls, best friends in high school have to have with each other when college is looming. And um, that was such a special scene to shoot because all of our scenes have just kind of been ridiculous and silly and funny. And that one really was like, that one hit home, you know? Yeah. And so I think that, I think that scene is probably my, my favorite scene that I've shot with him in his garage. I think that was like, we were both in it and we both felt it. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Chills. So yeah. okay, well, you guys have the best bromance ever. It sounds like <laughs> off camera too. So what's your number one tip for keeping a bromance alive, whether like it's in real life or if it's on camera? Check in with each other, you know, check in with each other and make sure each uh, this is a, this is a tough town. This is a tough industry. And um, I think no matter where you, you're at in your career, there's always going to be challenges and whatnot. Ask each other about 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 your lives, you know, and and actually have a genuine interest in him and, and just be there for him. And uh, I think we've been there for each other. And um, I think that's what we've also joked around a ton on set. So also keep it light. You know yeah. what I mean? Make yeah. each other laugh. I, I think laugh, laughter is the best medicine. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think um, our relationship got to a deeper level at a certain point. And, and um, yeah, it's all about caring for each other, you know? Totally. Asking those questions, even if they're hard questions, which I feel yeah. like sometimes you don't get these days. This is how crazy the world is. People are kind of consistent. Absolutely. Level. So that's great. It's a great piece of advice yeah. for anyone. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. So yeah. what is one thing that you know you'll walk away with and take with you from being a part of this incredible show? Um, I think that you know, I've learned that when you're working on a show, it doesn't matter who the person next to you is, you treat them with respect. And I think everyone on our show did that no matter who you were, everyone really treated each other with respect on that show. And I think that's one of the reasons for the show's success. Mm -hmm. I think when everyone's excited to be there and happy to be there, you know, the show benefits from that. Mm -hmm. So I think like, no matter whether it's a PA or a transpo guy or, or a makeup artist or, or your co-star, it's like everyone should be treated the same. It doesn't matter who you are. And then you feel like a family and feel like everyone's on the same team. So, you know, moving forward, I'm going to take that with me. And I just, I, I, uh, I, I hope to always be that way. And I hope the people that I work with are, are like that as well. Cause that's how it was on this show. Oh, I love to hear that. That's great. Yeah. So speaking of makeup artists and the hair team, how much, how much time do you spend in glam every day? Like in your little star wagon? So, okay. So makeup, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I don't, I don't need much. And that's not to say that I'm not saying like I have beautiful skin or anything like that. It's just they, these makeup artists, artists are so good at what they do. And so, you know, I don't spend that much time in the, in the makeup uh, chair, but in the hair chair, um, I spent a, a, a decent amount of time in there. My, my, um, my hairstylist, her name is Stacy. She's wonderful. I love our chats. I'm going to miss her so much when it's done. Um, but she has, she has the same routine every time she puts potions and mousses and whatever she does, diffusers and stuff. I don't know. She's a magician and she makes, she makes the locks look unbelievable. That's so fun. Okay, so for makeup, what do they do for makeup on guys? Or is it like mostly foundation? Is it concealer? What are they what are they doing? I think this is the terminology I'm not really well versed in, but you know, they start out they start out with a little moisturizer and then it's I think for me it's mostly foundation and a little concealer. Okay. Um kind of the one ongoing joke I have with my makeup artist is that I am not great at shaving. I really only get a little bit of the stash and so i'm like not good at it so like i'll come in i'll see myself in the mirror and i'll be like ah, didn't do a good job today <laughs> and they'll be like that's okay we could take off the last little bit or we could just cover that up that was the biggest challenge for me actually because i'm genuinely so bad at shaving 
Um, and that was like the biggest challenge. Like that was the only thing that it's like, they would have to kind of like finish it up or something like that. Um, but they are like, anytime, anytime we're doing either a dance scene or a big party scene or whatever, um, the girls are just, they're done up so well. And like our, our team is, is they're professionals, you know, they're really good at what they do. Yeah, that is so fun. Okay, so now for a spoiler question, like I said, we won't post mm -hmm. any of these until till after it's released. So how and why does is how and why does Adele shape your character this season? And whose idea was that? I if I could take a guess, that was probably Lang's idea. That's one of our showrunners, one of our creators. Um, that just that seems like a lying thing and if not it might have just been a, a, a pitch from from one of the writers but you know in in um in season two there's a line where I'm, I'm defending Eleanor and I'm like you know women should support other women while why did you know what else did we march for and I do think that I do think they wanted to run with that like feminism and in, in, in mm -hmm. Trent and so as soon as I read that line, I was like, this makes so much sense. One of his idols is a female singer. And I just, like, it just made so much sense to me. And also Adele writes about love songs and heartbreak songs, you know? And, and um, I think that's Trent. I think Trent loves to love, whether it's a girlfriend or it's Paxton, you know what I mean? I think he has so much love for those around him and um yeah as soon as i read that that made so much sense i actually on one of my last days i was walking through the halls and i went over to the locker and there was like a vip adele pass hanging up and i was like i'm gonna take this <laughs> oh, yeah that is <laughs> for the so memories cool. you know <laughs> absolutely that's yeah. so fun speaking of like memorabilia do you have anything else that you've taken from set that like holds a special place in your heart um I do, I do tend to take some things home. We, I tend to, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a hoarder. I, uh, anytime I like show my fiance something when I bring it home, I'm like, is this, is this okay? And she's always like, you have to take home what you have to take home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, this, so this wasn't, this wasn't necessarily from set, but when we had our final table read, we did an in-person table read and, we filmed it and it was such a beautiful thing. And and there was a name card, um, you know, it said Benjamin Norris, Trent Harrison. And um, I'm so proud of this character. I'm so proud of what I've done with this character, what the show's done with this character. And so just something as simple as a little name plate with both names on it, um, with, the, with the school logo on it. Um, I don't know that to me, that just seems kind of like the, the perfect little footnote on, um, on a beautiful experience. Yeah, that is super special. Yeah. So another, another, let's see, do we have another spoiler? Okay, well, not quite yet, almost though. So once you got the role, what kind of backstory did you give Trent or did the writers give that backstory to you? And has the backstory changed since season one? Okay, so, you know, I mentioned before that he's kind of a bit of an onion. So I think I... I think I came up with the foundation because like I said, he really was a character who would kind of pop in for a few funny lines. So first and foremost, I wanted this character to have almost like his POV is, is Paxton. He's going to be there for Paxton no matter what. And so anytime we would improv in between, my energy was always devoted to him. And it's, you know, certain crew members would laugh and stuff and kind of like, they would say those lines back to me and I would just be like, I would do anything for you, bro. You know, so first and foremost, I wanted it to be like, I'm here for you and you only. And then as the character started to grow and the writers started putting in these, these little nuggets of backstory, that's what kind of helped me like branch out and like grow my actual like backstory tree, you know? And so yeah. once again, I, I, found out he's a you know he's a major feminist you know and then another thing is he loves to blow things up you know <laughs> and so um all all of all of those little minute details definitely just like helped me build what what became Trent over the years 
Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's almost like you, you said earlier how, you know, you have these funny comedic one-liners, but then you also say these like serious heartfelt things and it takes, you know, catches everybody off guard, but it's almost like those things mean more from the silly comedic friend because you know they're coming from a place of truth because they're not saying those things often. So that's probably been such a cool character to just craft and create over the Exactly. Time. And and I think I think one other thing that I had thought about during during this journey was I was like, you know what? Trent's not he he's this odd mix of like he's not the sharpest tool in the shed, but yet he has certain tools that are actually like incredibly useful and even though he marches to the beat of his own drum i do i'm sure there's some insecurities in there about his intelligence and whatnot and um and you know what i think i think all of those kind of like lines that people are like taken aback by i think that's i think that's him trying to show that there's there's more to me than just like an f on a report card you know totally, yeah. um and i honestly i think that's i think that's important for even though this is kind of like this is a grand example of this kind of person there's a lot of kids in high school that maybe like academics is not your thing and like that's okay you have other things to offer high school is not the end of the world even though in high school it feels like it's the end of the world you know okay, yeah. so I, I, I hope he kind of inspires kids to understand that like you have so much to offer and just offer it and be yourself. That's yeah. like my biggest thing with Trent is he's just himself, you and, know? Yeah, I feel like Trent has that perspective too that like a lot of people don't and that's kind of what he brings to the table because everybody else, it's easy to get so caught up in what you're doing and focusing on the A's or whatever in the report cards and he just has like perspective which is equally as important, I think. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so another spoiler question. Was it hard to film that scene with Darren when you give him your hat? It's a, it's a <laughs> simple scene, but it's an emotional one. It was. I I mean, we had we had so much fun filming it because we have so much fun filming every scene. But yeah, it was it was definitely a little difficult because, you know, look, it was the third season, it wasn't our final scene season, but at the same time, it was kind of a reminder that like everything does end, you know, even even for Paxson and Trent, high school does end. And so I think, you know, even though you're in character and you're playing your character, like you can take those feelings with you into the scene. So I I did. I know Darren did. Mm -hmm. um, and the hat gesture is just it's just chef's kiss to me. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the hat to me was was you know it was his it was almost his identity in a sense mm -hmm. and um i think it's something as silly as taking off that hat and giving it to to paxton was kind of the the perfect example of like i'm ready for the next chapter and i hope you are too yeah oh so good okay yeah. so good another spoiler <laughs> <laughs> when you're walking in the hall hair down headed straight to Eleanor's costume fit fitting to get it on. Can you break down that entire sequence scene with us and how that all kind of came to be? Yeah, uh, I remember getting, I remember getting a text from Jaron who plays Ben and he said, wait until you read episode nine. <laughs> and he was like, I'm not gonna say anything, but wait until you read episode nine. So there, I knew there was gonna be a big thing. And then when I read it, I like, said to my fiance, I was like, I get like a Netflix slow-mo motion, <laughs> a, a moment. And, and it was like, I was really excited about it. I'm not gonna lie. And like everyone on set was very excited about it. Um, and so uh, Lang, our creator was there. She wanted to make sure that that scene was gonna look exactly how we wanted it to look. And, and um, you know, in film and TV, you shoot everything out of order, but it was kind of perfect that we did shoot that scene right before we moved into the classroom and shot that scene. And, um, sorry, I was getting a call. Um, so we, we, we shot that scene right before we moved into the classroom to, to shoot the next scene. And it helped so much um, because you can just kind of take that energy throughout. But uh, the slow-mo 
it was it was very trent like you know it was it was silly it was very silly and everyone had so much fun doing that like everyone had a great time making sure it looked like perfect and everything and and just um man that was uh that was one of the one of the if not like the coolest day i had on wow. set this entire experience yeah that is so cool amazing okay so i know it's already 11 30 so okay i'm going to we have a little game we want to play that only take a moment but i do want to wrap it up asking you how has this entire experience changed your life how has being on never have i ever just changed your life man it's uh it's it's changed my life so much um you know number one it was a dream project to work on so it's just it's this thing for three years now almost to the day three years ago yesterday was my first day on set which is so you know very serendipitous wow. and um that's, that's yeah real. thank you yeah so in the last three years it's just there's just been this thing that i've been so proud of and um and just the fact that it's a it's it's a show that's rooted in a specific culture mm -hmm. um you can call it an important show you know there are there have been people who come up to me and said like this means this show means so much to me and you know as an actor and as a writer myself it's like all you want to do is you want to create something that's going to resonate with people and that's going to entertain people and that's exactly what this show did um so it's just so cool to be a part of something that means a lot to so many people out there um and on top of that the people the people that i've worked with i've i've i like to i'm someone who likes to belong and to feel like i'm a part of a family and that's exactly what this was so um yeah i feel i feel so so grateful to to have been a part of it yeah and three years is a long time like that's a big chunk of life to be able to be a part of something so special and like so consistent yeah that, that's kind of that's a dream for an actor so yeah and no one told when i was getting into this industry no one told me you're gonna book this amazing role and then there's gonna be a pandemic that hits and i was like i had no i, I had no idea you know yeah. and so it's it's also crazy that we did this kind of during the, the craziest years like anyone's ever experienced so it was yeah. like finding that balance you know because it was the last few years were hard for everyone even though i was working my dream job it was still hard and um so what an interesting experience that was but um yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't trade trade this for the world yeah yeah oh, that's so cool well again thank you so much we're gonna post this on TikTok and instagram reels and our website of course so we'll tag you in everything so keep an eye out but um thank you so much for your time we appreciate you and we're so excited to just keep watching and keep cheering you on in your career. We know you're going to do amazing things. So thanks again. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to Young Entertainment Mag.